irreverent, entertaining, cool. You're listening to LA Talk Radio. You're listening to Question Reality with Priscilla Leona, right here on LA Talk Radio. Hi, welcome to Question Reality. I'm your host, Priscilla Leona, and we are coming to you live from Los Angeles, California. If this is your first time tuning in, our show will help you to question your career reality. Now, this show is for you if you are considering a career in the entertainment industry. Our guests on the show are going to provide you with advice on how and what it takes to successfully pursue a career in the entertainment industry. Now, the guest on our show include Emmy winners, Grammy winners, Tony winners, reality TV stars, producers, directors, actors, singers, comedians, casting directors, talent managers, screenwriters, novelists, and the list goes on and on and on and on and on and on on and on. If they are working professionally in show business, we are going to have them on this show <laughs> to give you entertainment career advice. Now, we make sure that our guests are at different stages of their careers from professional to beginner. So that means that we are definitely going to have someone on the show who will be able to help you with all of your show business career questions and provide really great advice. Now, you can either listen or download to any of our past guests by going to our archive page on the latalkradio.com website. So just go to uh, latalkradio.com, and then there's a Channel 1 link, and there's a drop-down box. You just click Question Reality, and this takes you directly to our archive page, and that's where you can listen to all of our shows. We've been on the air for eight years, since 2008, and we have a ton of people for you to listen to to get great advice about a career that you are pursuing. Now, our shows are also available to listen to for free on iTunes under the podcast section and on Stitcher.com uh, and Google Play. So just type in Question Reality Radio in the search box and you will find us. Now, as you know, we are booked always six months to a year in advance, but we are currently booking for October, November, and December. So if you are working professionally, Especially in the entertainment industry, and you want to come on and provide great advice to people who are pursuing a career in your arena, we would love to have you come on. Go to our official website, which is questionrealityradioshow.com, questionrealityradioshow.com, and you can submit to be on the show. Now, I also encourage you to download our new free apps for Android, iPhone, and again, Google Play, and that way you're going to be able to listen to not only our show, Question Reality, but a ton of other exciting and informative shows that we have here on LA Talk Radio. So it's on the home page. There you just go to the home page and it's you gotta scroll down and it's to the right towards the bottom. And that way you can hear everybody that's on the show. Oh my gosh. Oh, we are so excited to have this guest today. And we're going to talk to him in a couple minutes. Uh, His name is Danny Doherty. And I want you to go to his website. He is on imdb.com. So you want to go there now and type in Danny. And his last name is spelled D-O-H-E-R-T-Y. And you can check out some of his credits. And we are going to talk to him. He is going to be giving great, fantastic advice. Um, We're excited because he is, uh, which I'm tying this in because he is going to be on an upcoming episode of um, uh, Orange is the New Black. And I want to take a moment here before we talk to him. Um, Since we're going to be talking about Orange is the uh, the New Black, because of an original play, a musical, that was created by a very multi-talented young girl named Veronica Vasquez. Now, her production company, Kefi Studio, created this musical called Orange is the New Musical. 
And at the time I went to see it to support my friends, I had never watched the show Orange is the New Black. I had no idea why everyone in the theater of her production was laughing so long and hard and loud. And I was like, what the hell are these people laughing at? Why is this girl peeing on the top of a damn table? I had no idea because I wasn't familiar with the characters or the show. But based on seeing Veronica Vasquez's musical, I, uh, that, that next day, I went to watch it immediately. And I just thought, well, you know, I'll watch the first episode. The next thing you know, oh my gosh, I was on a marathon watching Spree. And I had spent almost the damn whole entire weekend watching all the seasons. So I would highly recommend, um, what's great is that Orange is this new musical. It was so fantastic. Let me just tell you why. We went to see it twice. This is how good it was. The musical is very funny. All of the actors have excellent comedic timing and and great, great singing abilities. And the original songs, what I love, they're always performed live on stage by some really top-notch young musicians. And with them performing on stage along with the show, it really adds a lot of excitement and fervor to the play. I'm telling you, this is a fantastic play. Um, the musical, its it was sold out every single time that we went to see it because it's so fabulous. But what is exciting is that Veronica Vasquez is bringing the play back back to coincide with the new season of Orange is the New Black, which is airing in June. So if you've missed seeing this really great musical about the show Orange is the New Black, you can finally see it for a limited time in L.A. only because what's happening is that they are going to eventually be taking the musical on tour, uh, hitting Broadway. Uh, And the latest news is now listen carefully. Very important. If you want to be a part of this, it is going to be a hit play. It is going to go tour around the country. It is going to go to Broadway. They are currently looking for partners to help get Orange is the New Musical on the road. So I would highly recommend that you get in contact with Veronica Vasquez right now today so that you might be able to say, hey, I'm a big Broadway producer on Orange is the New Musical. You never know. It could happen. So again, Orange is the New Musical. It's going to be playing on the following dates. So get a pen and paper right now. Um, I believe it's going to be at 8 o'clock, which is the standard for plays. But you can go to the website and check that out. It's orangeisthenewmusical.com. Orangeisthenewmusical.com. So now you will be able to see it again July the 1st, July the 8th, July the 15th, July 22nd, July 29th, August 5th, August 12th. And August 19th. And it is at the White Fire Theater in Sherman Oaks, California, 13500 Ventura Boulevard, Sherman Oaks. And again, the tickets are, you can buy them on the, the website, I believe, Orange is the New Musical.com. But definitely the tickets are on sale now at brownpapertickets.com. So, brownpapertickets.com, you got to see this play. It is so hysterical. It is funny. And uh, how it relates late to Orange is the New Black, psh, you are just not even going to believe how great this play is. And you know, it, don't, it feels like you're watching the characters in Orange is the New Black uh, in, in this musical. So there you go. All right, moving on to our guest today, the lovely, cute little button, Danny Doherty. Let me just tell you a little bit about him real briefly. Uh, He was born and raised in Yonkers. I have never, even though I'm from Connecticut, I have never even met anyone from Yonkers. He is my very first person from Yonkers, specifically on the show. Um, He comes from an Italian-Irish background. Hey, I'm Irish. Yeah, whoop, whoop. And from an early age, he was surrounded by creative types working in and around the business, the entertainment industry. And he has a natural talent to impersonate his favorite actors. And he has amazing comedy timing or comedic timing. And he has been described in reviews as a natural-born artist. And his favorite pastime growing up was putting on plays for his family and friends. Now, Danny started his path uh, as an actor 
uh, or actually in the entertainment industry as a break dancer at age 11. And then he went on to be a DJ around the New York City area. And at the time of 21, unfortunately, his dear, dear father and mentor passed away. And it actually caused him to, it kind of drove him professionally uh, and increased his determination to develop his his talent as an artist. So uh, at that particular time, he was lucky enough to land several lead and supporting roles. And one of them, as I was saying earlier, he can be seen <clears throat> on the Netflix hit uh, Orange is New Black. And it's going to be his episode, his particular episode is going to air on June 17th, I believe. Uh, you can also see Danny Doherty in HBO's Boardwalk Empire, Gotham, and the upcoming feature film Blood Runners, starring Ice T, one of my favorite, favorite people in the whole oh. entire world. I don't know if he's more of a favorite or his wife is more of a favorite. The two of them are cute as a button. They had a reality show a couple years ago. I was obsessed. I loved it. And she just has a, a new baby, I believe. Cute as a button. So again, uh, Danny Doherty uh, is active in New York City theater and film scene. And again, make sure you watch him on Orange is the New Black on June 17th. And also, oh, he's also on one of my other favorite shows, Law and Order Special Victims Unit. Yay! Uh, so without further ado, welcome to the show, Danny Doherty. <laughs> wow, that was that was a great intro. I appreciate it. Thank you. That was well, great. You are certainly welcome. Now, I am going to love hearing your accent from young guys. Well, <laughs> it's funny you said that because uh, you said, you know, you were in L.A. I was in L.A. for a little bit trying to get some things going. And every every time I talked, the first thing they said, Brooklyn or the Bronx? Brooklyn <laughs> or the Bronx? <laughs> and Nobody I even thought I Yonkers, right? Yeah, and I was like, no, yeah, and then I'd switch it up, and I'd talk in an Irish accent, I'm from Ireland, what are you talking about? <laughs> and they didn't know what, and they were like, really? <laughs> what the hell's going yeah. on with Danny Doherty? Now, uh, I... Oh, okay. You, you, well, I, I love your accent, I can listen to it all day, between okay. the New York and, and the British like accent. Brooklyn. It's Forget yeah, about it's like it, forget about it! And when I walk out of an audition, I'm like, oh, forget about it, this is mine, what are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> now, you are going to be appearing on the hit in uh, Netflix television show, Orange is the New Black, on uh, June 17th. How exciting Indeed. for you and for me, because as you know, I, I it, love that it, show. It was amazing. It was amazing. Um, well, what I, character are you playing, first of all? I'm playing a police officer. Okay. Um, uh, the audition experience was amazing. Jennifer Tell me Houston, about uh, Yeah, she... Cast out of New York, and um, who did you say well, exactly you got? What, you got cut off. I'm sorry. Who who was it that cast for the show? Jen Jennifer Houston. She's okay. the uh, casting director for uh, Orange Is the New Black. Set in New York. I um, auditioned. I don't know exactly when. It was sometime last year, and I went in, and uh, sh you know, she. I was re redirected a few times, and um, walked out. Great experience, and I got the call. I got the part, and. Um, I was on set for uh, about ten hours. We we filmed it, and it was a, it was a great experience. And I've been waiting for a year for it to come out. Uh, I filmed it last summer. Yeah, you. And, I've been um, waiting longer than that because I watched all the seasons in like one weekend. So it was like t t yeah. over a year. Ago. <laughs> yeah. Now, had you been it's a not, fan of the show prior to this, or had you not even heard about it? I I did watch it a few times, but um. Uh, like anything else, when I, if I'm not like um, a particular watcher of the show, like everyone's got their favorite show. Like I, I'm partial to Seinfeld and The Honeymooners. Now right. obviously that's over. But, you know, some people, you know, they're partial to their own shows. I did watch it, but like anything else, anytime I get an audition for a particular show, if I haven't seen it, mm -hmm. what I try to do is I try to YouTube some clips. I try to get familiar with the vibe of the show. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Try to, Great advice. Try to see what's going on, you know, and try to get a feel for the characters and the plot and, you know, the man, you know, just everything. Absolutely. And, um, yeah. And, uh, you know, I, I YouTubed a bunch of clips and uh, I went in and I let it rip. You know what so, I mean? So how did you get the audition? Did you, did some, did, what, was it through your agent? Was it something you saw on Actors <laughs> Access? How did you get it? Uh, through my agency, I work. 
I work with several different agencies, and one of my agencies got it for me. And uh, her name is uh, Stephanie. Uh, she's great. Um, and she got it for me, and uh, that's it. Le- now, when you, now, when you say you're with agencies, now, um, yeah. what, uh, for people who don't understand what you're talking about, because okay. usually, can you explain how you can be with more than one agency? Absolutely. Every career, for instance, like I started out doing extra work. That's how I started out to earn my SAG card. You know what I mean? Because you have to. Love it. Love it. That is is my number one recommendation, Danny. Please, actor, start out doing background work. You You, you have to. Listen, I, I, I got a whole, I'll tell you the whole story. I started my very first gig before I was SAG, I was doing what they call uh, just basic extra work, which is, you know, the guy in way in the background or the guy walking by. What you have to do to earn your SAG card is you have to become a featured extra. That's someone that is in the scene with the principals. They just don't talk. But you have, you're, you're, you're a prominent fixture in the scene. Like, you know, like let's say there's three cops and one of the cops is the principal and he's talking to the perpetrator or whatever. You're, you're one of the other cops standing next to him. You just don't say nothing. That's a featured extra. That's how you earn your waivers. You need three SAG waivers to become union. And then, you know, and then you have to get an agency, you know, and what I recommend is what I, what I mean when I have several agencies, I freelance with small boutique agencies. The more, the better, the, the more people you have, the better chance you have to audition. And then, you know, my career has been picking up lately, you know, and, so eventually I'm going to have to move on to a bigger agency. So, but at the career, the, the place that I started out in, I started out with little guys, little boutique. Guys. There's tons of them in LA. There's tons of them in New York. I suggest you just, all you have to do is Google, just Google boutique agencies in, in Los Angeles or, or New York. You need a demo reel. You need solid headshots that these two things, are, it's just like being a carpenter. You're not going to go into a house you know, and do a job without the right tools. You need the right tools. You're an actor. You have to take it seriously. You have to always prepare. Like I'm, I'm always doing monologues, like I just for my own, like I pick monologues off the internet. I just sit there and I do them. It's just like going to the batting cage. You got to keep fresh. You know what I mean? Now, and, what, 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 do, what, uh, absolutely. Now, what do you feel in your personal opinion? What do you feel are, the pros and cons of the life of an actor, because there are a lot of people, Danny, who are working a Monday through Friday, nine to five job, and they dream of pursuing a career as an actor. But what do you realistically need to tell people who are pursuing? What are the pros? What okay. are the cons? I would definitely say I have had, I've met A-list actors. I've hung out with A-list actors and I've hung out with people that, you know, are just, I'm, I'm an actor. I want to be an actor. And they always ask me, and, and I say, well, look, becoming an actor, it's, it's not like anything else. First of all, it has, to, it, it has to choose you almost. It has to be in you. you. You have to want to inspire people. Like, for me, when I was a kid, watching a movie made me happy, made me sad. And so I wanted to be like them. It can't be about the fame, the parties, all that other stuff. If, it's about, if you're in, into it for that, to become an actor... You're going to be disappointed really quick. You have to take the work seriously. And what comes along with it is a lot of sacrifice. I was working in a pizzeria in the Bronx, like uh, five days, six days a week, and going on auditions. And I had no I was working from 11 o'clock in the morning till sometimes 12 o'clock at night. And I had no time to, to go over my sides. I was going over the sides in the meat locker. And the, all the guys that were working, they thought I was nuts. You know what I mean? I was saying all these crazy <laughs> things. You know, in the meat walk, and they'd be like, what are you doing? And I'd be like, leave me alone. I, I need this time, you know? And, and then the <laughs> next day, I, you know, I would have to take off of it, and I'd go on the audition. But that's what it takes. A lot of sacrifice. There's a lot of, you know, you have to watch your money, you know, keep your money for your shelter and your food. And it's just a lot of sacrifice. But if you, persistence, I tell every actor, it's persistence. Persistence trumps everything. If this is what you want, just keep at it. Like, I've been told a million times no before I heard one yes. The, the very first professional thing I ever did was uh, Boardwalk Empire. That was the 
the first, you know, really professional thing. I've done a lot of short films and, and I did a lot of stage work before that. But my first, I consider professional gig that I got to speak in was Boardwalk Empire. And then it just kind of snowballs from there, you know? Right. So it's persistent. You're going to hear a lot of no's and you're going to be depressed. I've gotten depressed a lot of times. I'll tell you a great story. Yeah. I auditioned for Law and Order the first time. Now, anyone who's ever auditioned for Law and Order knows that it's a it's a different kind of audition process. You got the producers there, the writers, everyone's in your face. They they bring you right down to where they film. You know, they film in Chelsea Piers and um, down in New York City. So it's a little intimidating, you know. So I went there. I was I just finished doing Gotham. I just finished filming Gotham. Got the audition for Law, and I went in there, and I I uh, I tanked. Like, I froze. Like, I, from whatever, it wasn't stage, but it's just I couldn't remember the lines, and I tanked. And I walked out of here, and I said, if I ever get back in this room, that will never happen again. And two months ago, I went back in, and I, I booked it. And you'll see me on Law & Order this Wednesday. Wow! Oh, this Wednesday night! Oh! Ah! Yeah. Yes! Yeah. Well, what was the difference, Danny? What What did you do? What adjustment did you make for you to be able to get rid of those nerves and book it this time? Well, you're always going to have nerves. Anyone who says they don't, it's funny because the only time I, I really don't have any, uh, I'm not nervous at all is when I'm actually filming. I mean, like when, I mean, I used to watch Ice-T as a kid growing up and here I am doing, uh, uh, I have a, a starring role with him in a film and he's not Ice-T. He's just the other actor. He's just the guy that's, you know, he's the character he's playing. Like, so what I try to, when I'm on set, I'm the character. I'm not me. I'm, I'm not focused on anything. I'm not focused on, you know, what's going on. I'm focused on what I have to do. Like, you know, what character am I? What am I, what are my objectives for this day? And so it's just, for, for, for whatever reason, the audition process, it's a little different because it's kind of like a test, I guess, in, in your mind. But what I do is I, I try to listen to music. Like, I listen to my favorite songs. I pump myself up. I, I And the night before, two, three days before, just prepare. Just keep doing the lines over and over and over again. And, and something will come out of you. Like, the character will just develop. Like, something that you start off when you first read it will be nothing like it is when after you've read it the, for 100, 200 times. It will be totally different. And once you know the lines, you become confident. You know, you're not worrying about, um, do I know my lines? Or right? You just go into the room and you do what you got to do. And if you know the lines and you're comfortable with them, you know, the nerves kind of dissipate. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now, what, what, what do you feel is the hardest part about being an actor? The hardest part? The, the hardest part of that is, um, well, first of all, I, I love being an actor. I, I wouldn't change, change it. It's, it's not only been just the, the quest for work. It's, it's the self-discovery that I've, 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 that's come along with it. The, the discipline, the self-sacrifice, the, the learning to go without things and seeing things, you know, a little different in a different light. Like, you, you don't need certain things to be happy. You just have to live your life and enjoy nature and, and good friends and company. It doesn't have to be about every all the exterior frequencies that disrupt you. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So, but the hardest thing about being an actor is kind of the, the rejection, I suppose. You know what I mean? Yeah. But after so many times, it, it almost becomes normal, and, and you're like, okay, well, this is the life that I'm living. This is, this is what comes along with it. This is kind of career hazard. It, 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 just, it is what it is. It's, not, it's nothing personal. It just happens. And, and it's like fishing. You lose one, you rig one. So right, you just keep that. Just keep going. And let me let me ask you something. A lot of people, and I, I'm sure you understand this. Not mm-hmm. uh, the, one of the things that I try to stress to people is that you really need to have certain characteristic traits for certain professions. For example, if mm-hmm. you're shy and you're introverted, you are not going to make a good used car salesman. Am I right? Right. <laughs> yeah. Right. So. Yeah. What yeah. characteristic traits do you feel that a, a person needs to have to be a great actor? One, you definitely have to be. I feel that you have to have extreme patience. I think you have to, as mm-hmm. you said, persistence. You've got to yes. not be afraid of rejection. So what can you add to that? What do you think? 
you have to be strong with you have to have a lot of self discipline in terms of you have to be able to go if you're if you're into like instant gratification like you need things and you like right away then it's going to be a problem. If you have patience, if you could learn to just accept things as, as the way they are, but keep on working at them without it letting it affecting you into a way where it's going to like disrupt your whole life, then you have the, the right mind frame. That's the only thing I can Cause I've had a lot of friends that were gung ho actors. I'm an actor, you know? And then a, a year later, it, it's over. They pull the record and they jump because the reality sets in, the nose, the no, the, you know, like I've been cut out of films, uh, you know, I've been rejected at auditions. It's like, you know, you go into an audition and you don't know if you did good or you did bad and, and then you don't hear nothing that can weigh on a person, you know? Right. So you have to, you have to be able to just accept it, accept it. This is your dream. This is what I want. Those things come along with it. But if I keep at it, eventually something's going to stick on the wall. You just have to have that in the back of your mind. I could do this, and I know eventually it will happen. What do you think that a director wants most <laughs> from an actor on the set? What does he want from you? If he hires you, what does he want? What does he expect from you? What are the things? Well, what are the what are the pet peeves? I guess this is a multiple question. What are some of the director's it, pet peeves? What do they want you to be able to do? Uh, other well, than the obvious, other than knowing your lines and being able to act. Well, the number one thing is he wants you to be like, if you, it's the same thing. Like if you were hiring a carpenter to come build you something, you would want that guy to build it as you see it in your head or as close to it as possible. You don't want him coming there and saying, well, I don't like that idea. I think we should do it this way. You know what I mean? Uh, or, or do it that way. He wants you to come there and, Bring across that character that melds with the story, you know, and he wants you to be professional about it. You got to be, you know, be on time. Just remember, 15, five minutes late on set or an audition, it's over. You, it's mm -hmm. always 15 minutes early. Be, be on time. Be professional. Be courteous. Be humble and be, and go there and, you know, and do your job. Just go there and know your lines, like you said, and be able to bring it. And let, let me let, let me interject as I always do to add this. Please, people, do not participate in gossip on the set with other actors. Oh, no. They I will try to engage your ass into gossiping about the director, the producer, other actors. If you participate, you are just as guilty, and they are going to find out about it. And that is something that you will not get cast in that project again. Absolutely. Can, right. Let's talk about that. How many times has that yes. happened? Especially when you're a background actor. Oh, my God. They're like I, crazy with the gossip. I, I've seen a lot of um, background actors, you know, they're talking and, you know, a lot of people kind of frowned upon. And also that, that also goes across to an audition. When you go to audition, every, you know, you could be friendly with everybody. But just remember, you're going there for a reason. So focus on what you're doing. Don't go there and start talking about your day. And if you want to do that, do it afterwards. When you're in that waiting room, just focus on what you're doing. Like, don't make it a, like a, a time to start talking to everybody. And, you know, you could be friendly. Hi, how are you? And, you know, whatever. But go in there, do your job. And then when you're out of there, then you can, you know, do whatever yeah, you got to do. They, just, some actors don't realize that the casting associates and assistants are listening to you out in there. Yes. They hear you. They are going to be yes. telling the caster, you could get dismissed from a role for just whatever you said. Oh, yeah, I went to this club. I got so fucked up last night, man. Oh, dude, yes. dude. It's, yes. Well, it's, it's, it's a time and place for everything. And certain certain place, you know, when you're in an audition, and plus also it could be distracting to the other actors. Yeah, who are trying to, you know, up. go over their lines. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Like, you know, there's, there's, there's a lot of hungry people out there. And... Some people take it really, really, really seriously, which you have to. And, yeah. you know, you have to go in there and, you know, focus. I I just, like, when I'm going to an audition, of course, you're polite and you're curious. Hi, it, it, sometimes they've been bumping all the actors I know. Hey, whatever, so-and-so, how you doing, blah, blah, you know, whatever. And then I just simply say, hey, man, I'll talk to you after we're done. That's what I always say. It's right. just, it's a, polite, it's a polite way to say, 
let's do this, and then we'll bullshit. You know what I mean? That's it. Now, question. You, good-looking guy, strong accent um, Mm -hmm. from from New York, do you get typecast in certain roles? Because Um, I think looking at you and hearing you, I can see you do like 50,000 roles. I can see you can be like, I can see you as that. Uh, But do people, are you starting to get caught? Like, you know how some actors, they get typecast for certain roles because they're strong in those roles? Some people, you know, they could end up like Kramer and be typecast. You know, that's the (laughs) famous one. Oh, he's like, oh, I'm being typecast here. You know, but no, um, I get called out for everything you know what i mean but um what people don't know is my fronts i i've done a lot of like the gangster role the, you know cop whatever but a lot of people don't know is that my strong suit is actually comedy i had um a part in um james uh lapine lapine film now he's one of the biggest directors on broadway viola davis was in it catalina soldano uh marino who soldano marino who was in um uh, Maria Full Grace, uh, Ellen Burstyn. I had a, a scene with an Oscar nominee. Um, now she, now when I went there, I remember going. It, it said in the character breakdown, um, actor with very strong comedy skills. So I read the sides and I interpreted the way I did. Now, when I went down to the initial audition for the casting directors, it was very you know business like. Oh, that was great. Thank you. You know if would you be willing to come back for the callback? Now, when I went back to the callback, the director was, was there. And I said, you know what? I'm going to let it rip here. And I did all these little things. Like I did like a little, you know how Fonzie, I mean, not Fonzie, the, um, the guys from Laverne and Shirley, they bite Lenny their and hand Squiggy. or something. Lenny and Squiggy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. When they see like a, a girl walk by, like I, I yes. did something like that. And, and the director just burst out laughing. You know what I mean? And I was like, all right, I did the right thing. And I got the part. Now, it's funny because I'm going to tell you a good story. Now, even when I was shooting it, the director was watching it on the monitors in another room. And when he yelled cut, he was laughing so hard for five minutes. He didn't stop after my scene, after what I did. Now, (laughs) Now, I was on set of Law and Order. Now, Raul Esparza was also in this film. He's uh, the star of uh, Law and Order. So I had to see what character one does talking. what character does Raul play? I he, can't remember. They got all these new. He plays people. D. A., he plays Barba. D. A. Barba. In, um, oh, Barba. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, in between takes, you know, we were just talking, you know, and I just happened to mention to him. I just say, hey, you know, hey, Raul, I was in custody too, because he didn't know, you know. I was oh, really? He's like, it's great. And I just told him a quick story. I just said, this is this is accepted behavior on set when you, you know, actors do talk to each other. They do, you know, you know, camaraderie type thing, but it's all business like. So he said, Hey, you know, um, by the way, I said, when I auditioned for James, he was laughing and he looked at me and he said, you know, you did something. He's like, because I've worked with him on Broadway and he's a hard man to make laugh. <laughs> you know what I mean? So that kind of made wow. me, uh, yeah. that kind of made me feel like, like, Ooh, I did something here. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, I made this you know, I, I made this big Broadway director like this. So it was pretty cool. So, you know. Yeah. Then, yeah, so we did our scenes, and it was it was pretty cool, so, you know. So, it, again, it, it, again, you're going to be on Law & Order this week. What is your character? Who? What do we need to look for I'm to playing, see? I'm playing a, a correctional officer. Okay, I'm, and you're I'm, in the scene with Barb. With, uh, Bar, with, uh, with uh, yeah, Mariska Haggerty. She, she's in it, too. Um, and it's pretty cool, too. And also... He's in the same scene, but I wasn't in the same shot with him. Um, oh. Bill Duke. Now I grew up watching Bill Duke. He oh my God! I was in, I was in a movie with Bill Duke. Oh my God! I love him. You yeah. See? You see? Yeah. Well, I was yeah. watch, watching him in Medical Society. Now I'm getting I'm being taken in the uh, in the uh, van back, you know, from set back to the trailers. And I'm talking to him. I said, Mr. Duke, I said, I tell you, so you're one of the reasons I'm an actor. I said, there's multiple actors in multiple movies, but he's in that, in that big bucket. And I said, Mr. Duke, you know, you, one of the reasons I'm an actor, you inspired me, you know, your, your work made me feel good when I needed it. And he's like, Oh, thank you. So he's like, God bless. And he gave me advice that this is a big actor. And he's, and I even asked him, I said, what advice? He said, you know what he told me? Shred up. Just what? don't give up. Just mm-hmm. keep going. Persistence. And that's what I've been 
saying it, to hear uh, uh, um, one of my mentors tell me what I've always thought myself was validation. Uh, you know, she just said, don't give up. Just mm-hmm. persistence. Just keep going. Just keep at it. That's what he uh-huh. told me. You know? Yeah, he, he's a really nice guy. Um, uh, he directed uh, he, he directed a uh, uh, way back in 2000. I was in uh, a, a, sh- a short lived TV sh- series called City of Angels, and he oh, was wow. so nice to us. I mean, he took the time and uh, talked to us and gave us lots of motivation and inspiration. So he's uh, he's, he's a nice. Guy. I love that guy. Oh, he was fantastic. So this, so, so, so now, uh, Law and Order, of course, one of my favorite shows has been mm-hmm. on air, what, like 14 years. Amazing storylines. <laughs> you just never yeah. get tired and bored of that. I think it's could go another five years. It was so great no, to see only, Richard Belzer. He was back on the show for a cameo appearance. I don't know if you saw that. The series is amazing. The, the, only, the only series that, that compares it, like the old one, like Gunsmoke, and ran for like 20 yeah. years. You know? Yeah. Like Bonanza. Yeah. Like back in the old days. You know? Now, how? Now, so how? What was the process for the Law and Order? Uh, who cast you for that? How did you get the audition, et cetera, et cetera? That's um, they cast it out in New York. Like I said, I told you, like the I was on Law and Order an audition um, last year. I didn't get it. I told you I went in there and I just yeah. I blanked out. Well, I couldn't get the lines out, <laughs> and I walked out and I. I yeah. Well, it, it no, happens, it's a, no. Know? That happened to me. I auditioned. Um, I don't. I don't act anymore. I produce. Uh, you know, I have my own production company, so I produce awesome. feature film films. But back when I started out, because I said if I want to be a producer, I got to learn from the bottom. I'm going to start doing background acting. So I was on all yes. these shows, and I loved yes. it. I loved it. Back right, and, back. Oh, it rocks That's because you right. learn it, so much. You really you learn the nuts and the bolts of the business. You it's do. the best experience. And if you, you go there and you you it's really on the job training is what it is. I mean I yeah. went I went to acting school. I learned, you know, this this you can't learn to act. You know, you can learn the mechanics of it, where to sit, where to look, eye line, that kind of stuff. That's all that's you you have to learn. You know, camera technique, all that. That's a given. But when you're on the set, you see it there. You don't see that in school. You know what I mean? So it's the best on the job training ever. You know what I mean? You can really learn a lot when Uh. you're, you're an extra. I I did. I took it as a, like I wasn't, when I was there, I was watching everything. I was watching them set up the cameras. I was watching the actors where they stood. I was watching with how they looked at each other. You know, like if the cameras in this position, like where did they look? There aren't like, there's a lot of little things you could pick up on. You know? Oh, it is. I am so happy. You are the only guest in eight years that emphasizes that. And I have tried to drag this out of so many people. Um, well, but, you know, a person. You're not, not going to start out as Brad Pitt. That's, that's ridiculous. That's, that is the real. But you know what? Some people think they get right off the bus and they're like, where's my yeah. agent? Where's the paparazzi? I'm like, it, you're a crazy it, ass. You need to. St- not going to happen. St- Right. And uh, yeah, so I am just so, so happy to I'm going to get to see you uh, on on one of my favorite shows. Now, one of the things um, you I understand from your publicist, Dan Lasky from Lasky Digital. Yes. Oh, Dan Lasky. Let me. me Oh, fantastic. Thank you, Dan Lasky. He's great. Uh, Yes. uh, Lasky Digital uh, PR. He's at LaskyDigital.com. He's so sincere and genuine and down Oh, he just, oh, get out of here. He's a saint. Yeah, if you're an actor, people, in the entertainment industry, or you need help in promoting career, I, I'm i sure Danny agrees with me. I highly recommend that you contact okay. him because uh, he, he, contact. He's, he's a great guy. And he's, yeah. he definitely, he's in it because, you see, I'm in, in entertainment because I love acting. He loves helping the actors. He has a passion. He has a passion for that. So he's a great guy. Right. Yes. So he is what's called people, as Danny will explain to you. He is called Dan Lasky is called being part of the team. And if you yes. want to be a professional actor, you got to treat yourself as a professional, even if you're a background yes. actor. So as you yes. can see here, Mr. Danny Doherty, he's he's not up with Brad Pitt yet, but he will be. And you know why? Because he's yes. smart enough to love background acting, to understand it. And he has gone and got himself a PR guy to help yes. promote his image, his business, and his talents. Am I right, Danny? Yes. 
I am. You're totally People right. People are I, scared. They're scared. They think that get, no, having a PR agent you, is like way above them. You can get a PR agent at any level. At any level, it's when listen when you when I did background work, I was excited. I, I couldn't. Could I say the very first thing I ever did? Like, as far as that, I was a stand-in for Robert Downey Jr. That was my first thing on a movie called Game 6 with Michael Keaton. And act, and check this out. You're going to love this. It, you're, you're, the beginning actors will love this. This, this goes to show you, if you take it seriously, it, it was a film called Game 6. It starred Robert Downey Jr. and Michael Keaton. I was hired to be, um, the regular stand-in got six. So they hired me for two days to be a stand-in. And as I was there... Um, there was a lot of non-union uh, um, background actors, and we were running late. And as you know, you could be on set for two hours, you could be on set for 14 hours. It, I was on set for Gotham from 6 o'clock in the morning till 2 o'clock in, at night. You know what I mean? So it, oh, it, it all time. depends. Woo, you got paid nice. All right, go ahead. Oh, I yeah. Because it. anyway, <laughs> <laughs> so a lot of the actors were getting mad. They were like, you know, what's going on, blah, 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 and, and they left. And because... Some of them left. The, the director used me in the film, and I had screen time as an extra. I'm the guy on the stage. It, it took place in a Broadway theater. Um, Robert Downey Jr. was a Broadway critic, and Michael uh, Keaton was a Broadway writer. I was the guy cleaning up the, um, the stage, and you see it was just me. Like, they focused on me. And the best part was I hung out with Robert Downey Jr. all day. I, I spoke to him. He gave me nuggets of wisdom. Okay. Wow. Wow. This is Robert Downey Jr. He's the creme de la creme. Oh, yes. You know? Yes, we just went to see him in Captain America. But see, this is another great story because if you go there thinking you're going to be in and out of the, of the set in 45 minutes, you're crazy. You are going, no. you've got to be there for the long haul. Yeah. And look how, how Danny profited. He got to, you know, work, uh, be the stand in for Robert Downey Jr. Yeah. You got to do it. And I was extra on set. I said, this is great. I, I said, I, I can't believe I'm on, I'm on a real set. Even if it is an extra, I'm a part of this puzzle. They need me here, and I'm here. I said, this is my dream. This, even though, you know, your dream is to be uh, a full-fledged actor, this is the beginning. It's like, a, it's like a flower. It's just starting to bloom. It's just not going to bloom into a rose. It's got to come up from the dirt slowly. But it, the point is, it's coming. You could see it rising. That's a beautiful thing. I That's was like, right. I'm living my dream. I'm, I'm right. on a movie set. You know? Absolutely. Now, let's talk, because we are, you and I, I can tell we could be talking for hours, but I want to get this in, because okay. we, got, we got five minutes. You are in right. the feature film Blood Runner, starring one of my yes. favorite guys in the world, Ice-T. Uh, is uh, it, tell me, you know, what, you know give me, give what's the movie synopsis. about? Who's your character? We and are... We are vampires. It play. It takes place in the 1930s prohibition. Um, instead of running alcohol, we run blood. That's Whoa! I mean. love that. I love that. Yeah. It takes place in. It's having its premiere at the Kimmel Center in Philadelphia this August 27th. Ice T will be in attendance. He is. He is, let me tell you something, he is just an all-around powerhouse talent. Like, I was, like, I, I, when I was doing it, I, I didn't, you know, realize it because I'm so busy doing what I'm doing. It's the after effect when I'm thinking about it. I'm like, wow, I can't believe I just did that with Ice-T. And the guy, and he's down-to-earth, funny dude. He's just like you would think he is. He's just, he's a cool cat. You know what I mean? Yeah. He's just a cool dude. I know. I, I, watched, I watched that. I watched that reality show with him and his wife Coco. And I knew Coco. Yeah. Oh, she's did a, you? Oh, I love her. Yeah. No, Coco. She's aces too. They're both. They're, they're a cool couple, man. And they, they get along. Use, oh my God, they get along. They so love great. each other. They get, oh, they get yes, along they like two peas in a pod. They like oh, two, like two. Yeah. Like, I would love cool to meet people. them. The two of them are on my they're bucket just, list of people to meet. So you're they're, so just, lucky. they're just cool, cool people. They're just now, cool people. That's what. I'm you now, Blood Runners. Uh, is it in major theaters or is it a limited run or where can we? That I that I that oh, no. I don't okay. know. Okay, I don't know any. I'm just okay. Well, what what will we see you in the scene? Where should we look to see you? 
Okay, I'm going to be on, uh, you know, I'll be on episode two of um, Orange is the New Black. That comes oh, oh, no, oh, no, oh, no, I meant in the movie, in the Blood Runners. Oh, what, oh, what, oh what in the character? movie. Yeah, what character? I'm, I'm, playing a ca- I'm playing a character named Baker. Baker, okay, I, yes. I play a, a gangster. I got the Al Capone thing going on, and I did a really cool scene. I don't want to give too much away because I want yeah. everybody to see it. But oh, when I'm you see it, it it's going to blow you away. And when you oh. see Ice's performance, you're going to see Ice back as Woo! Ice T, yeah. the original gangster. Yeah. You know I mean? Oh, my yeah. gosh. I'm excited. Okay, so you're in something called West of the City police drama. What is that? A, a new – what is okay. it? A- West, of the, West of the City is uh, – we shot the pilot. They it it um it stars one of the um Dan uh, Dan Grimaldi he was in The Sopranos Lou Martini uh, Henke Madeira he was in Weeds um uh, Greg Mums he was in Oz he played poet All so it's being there. shopped um, around so you shot the pilot and it's being shopped around right now yes right? we we, sh- we shot the pilot it's being shopped around and um, hopefully you know we'll be. And if that when that kicks off, I'll be a series regular, you know. Woo! Oh, I and, hope uh, so. so. Yeah. Yeah. So we shot the pilot that's uh, being shot around. It was a great experience. We shot it in uh, Union, New Jersey. Mm. Uh, great, great trip. So you know, I got, I got, I'm very, I got a lot of things in. You the got office, a lot you know? going on, Danny. You got yeah. a lot of stuff going on. Um, hey, it, uh, 20, 20 years in twenty years in the making, almost. You oh know? well. Yeah, it's it's time. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's time. Yeah. So you yeah. are going to be uh, June seventeenth. You are going to be in Orange Is the New Black uh, this Wednesday. Correct. You're going to be on Law and Order, and Correct. I'm very excited to. I'm very excited to see how your career takes off. You have to come back. You are more than oh, welcome. I will. You got to come back oh, on the show and, and update us on what's going on. And hey, anybody that wants a cool guy from Yonkers, he can play multiple <laughs> roles. Go on IMDb and contact, I assume, your agents on there or just contact yeah, me and I'll get you in touch with them. Um, but he is a great guy, obviously. He's professional, he's serious, and he's going to treat your project like that. So if you need a guy, oh, uh, Danny Doherty is the is the one. And by the way, Mr. Danny Doherty, I'm going to need you to help me out a little bit because I have a new yeah. web series called Carbon Dating. I'm one of the producers, and we have already okay. won multiple awards, and we're now in the running for an Emmy Award under the Emmy's new category awesome. short, for, short format series comedy or a drama so go to YouTube and give us a little thumb up and write a nice little comment it's hysterical it's a it's a really great comedy so it's called carbon dating carbon dating series.com so go to I YouTube will. I'm gonna send you an email <laughs> all right my sweetie pie anybody wants to get in touch with Danny What's your email address, Danny? Or where, where, where can we get in contact with you if somebody wants to hire you? What do we do? Uh, my email address is musak143 yahoo.com. Hold on. I'm going to type it down. M-U-S-K what? M-U-S-A-K, musak143 at yahoo.com. Three at Yahoo. There you go. You want to get in touch with Danny for a roll? M U S A K 143 at Yahoo.com. Hire him for a roll. You'll be happy. Thank yes, you. Yes, hire me, please. Danny, say goodbye <laughs> to your fans. Hey, I want to thank everybody for listening. And the one thing I want to leave every aspiring actor is just don't give up. Just persistence, persistence. And I promise you, something will kick off. Just keep at it. Absolutely. And I'm going to be calling your little butt to fly out to L.A. for one of my films. You are in the Oh, <laughs> oh thank you. Oh, I'm blushing. I'm all a flutter. All right, <laughs> sweetie. All right, everybody. Thank you for listening to Danny Doherty. Go to imdb.com to check out, and he'll be on Law & Order this Wednesday, and he'll be on Orange in the New Black June 17th. Thank you, Danny Doherty. Say goodbye. Thank you. Bye, everybody. God bless. Bye. You're listening to Question Reality with Priscilla Leona right here on L.A. Talk Radio.